Okay, to continue my design of my character's face, where I kind of stole an expression from Donald Trump, the goal is, in this character design, to be able to make that shape work from the front, which is kind of a mushroom shape, like this jaw on this head, and then carry that front image over both the cranium, that top shape, and the mandible, the jaw shape, and show it also from the side. Now the cranium should look pretty much the same from the front to the side, but the mandible is obviously going to change. And here it's a little bit more towards one side. I like to show my character sheets with the, the faces uh, pointed to the left. And then I find an eye line. Now a typical eye line for a character, and this is for believable proportions, is that you go halfway from the top of the head to the bottom of the head. And on that halfway line is where you'll find the eyes. Kind of on that dotted line there. That's the eye line. But this is for a character design, so you can mess around and, and find your own path. But if I draw his eyes, I'm going to take kind of my square-shaped design. I'm also going to use other things from reality. So something from reality is that we have five eyes across the width of our skull, not including our ears, which are just cartilage. So I'm going to take five spaces that are about equal, and that shows me where the eyes should be placed. That gives me the most flexible amount of human expression. No matter how simply I draw the eyes, it helps me know where to place them. That gives me one eye width between the eyes, right? And the nose of my character is going to fill up that space between the eyes. So this is kind of the square that takes up the nose. Now for my character design, my nose is about one third of the way down from the eye line to the bottom of the jaw. So I'm going to split that bottom part in thirds. And then that bottom third is going to be where the mouth goes. I can carry those over. Those aren't quite reality. So I'm going to draw a little box for the nose there that fits within that. Make a little mark for the mouth. And then the eye, I'm basically, this is why I love digital, I'm basically just going to steal the eye design, duplicate it, and move it over until it feels right on the side view. Because it's not going to be a full eye width back from the front. That would be kind of like his face was folded instead of rounded. But I do want it to be a full eye width. Because our eyes are, are kind of like a, a corner window office on a building. The, the ocular cavity where our eyeball sits. Oops. Oops. <laughs> the ocular cavity gives the, the eyeball enough space. So I'll kind of draw that. There's all that space for the eyeball, so it can pivot all the way to the edge. So from the side, the eye is going to be about as long as it is from the front, but it might be shaped slightly differently. So instead of being angled up just like that, it might angle forwards a little bit in a slightly triangular shape. Kind of like that. All right, next we have the ears. So the ears fit nicely between the eye line and the nose line. But to make that work, I need to make him a little bit more jowly. So add a little bit of muscle to these cheekbones here. And then my ears connect. Because his nose is pretty short, you know, only a third of the way down between his eye and his chin, that makes his ears fairly small. And I wanted that because this is supposed to be kind of a kid version of the character. And now for the top, I'm just going to take the eye line and I'm going to make thirds at the top. So we have a very simple design here. We find the middle, 
we find a third, we find a third to, to the bottom, we also find a third to the top and a third to the top. Now that top third, that usually wouldn't be anything on a real person's face except where their brow muscles are. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But this is going to be the edge of my helmet. And that's going to wrap all the way to behind the ears. And I have that little divot cut out of the helmet there, right in the middle of the eye, and then a little divot right at the edge of the eye cut out on this side. And then I have little grommets there, a grommet there, and a grommet here. Then I'm going to round that helmet out above and beyond the cranium shape because hats have to fall and fit around what's already there. So I get this big wide oval that I can only draw after I've already drawn the cranium shape. And then lastly, we have these horns. Let me do them in a slightly different color. And they're pretty tight to the helmet, which is good. Doesn't interfere too much with my side view. And they're set really right on the side. So that curve is almost not necessary. Now, since I know I'm going to need more space for this, it's a good time to reorganize my layers a little bit. Shrink this up into the corner. That's kind of a three-quarter sketchy view, which is informing my full character sheet. Then take all this other stuff, hold down shift so I can move it all together, move it here, and then hit command T. Can enlarge it a little bit. And then I can take all these layers. When I just do this, merge them together. By hitting Command E. And then just move this without shifting it at all. Just with my arrow keys over a little bit. So I have space. All right. So now to fill in from the side, I just have to make that helmet kind of work from the side, so I use the same tools. It starts at this third line and then wraps around to behind the ear. So it's a curve that goes all the way down to behind the ear. Then it's gonna go up and around the cranium, over and above it. I'm being pretty sketchy here to try to find the curve that feels right. And then the horns, come out about right here. <coughs> and then even though this is a side view, I want the horns to basically be about the same size and shape as they are from the front view. That's the, the kind of trick of cartooning and of character design. We don't need to make 3D models that are perfectly believable. We want the character to be recognizable from whatever angle we're, we're drawing them. So I'm going to build in a little bit more of that gel for the ear. And then I'm going to play with the brow ridge. And then I'm going to play with the upper <coughs> lip and the lower lip. And the more defined I make that, the more adult he's going to look. So because I want it to stay like a kid, I'm just going to leave a lot of that pretty soft. A lot of this pretty soft as well, actually. I just need to get kind of the shape right. Okay. Now, before I move on with more kind of details and really finishing off the head design, I just want to make sure I can bring over these elements I've decided on. But everything else, like... Well, that's going to be tricky. Cut the horn to about there. So I've kind of made a, a map of the face of my character, right? That's going to make everything else easier. 
I'm going to shorten the back a little. And I want to figure out all those proportions and be happy with them before I start doing details. Things like eyebrows and lips and smudges. Uh, the other thing I want to start thinking about is the neck. Like, where does the neck come in and out of? So I tend to think it's going to come back behind the ear, and back under the chin, and it's kind of hidden here. So if it's a neck like that, then the body would be here. And you basically wouldn't see the neck at all from the front. It would be kind of like that. And that can work. All right. Now, how can I get more informed for the next phase of this? I also probably want to play with the ear overlapping the helmet a little bit. That might be a little bit more fun graphically, breaking that line. And so if I do it on the front, I also want to make sure I show that on the side. And as long as they're centered on the eye and nose line, you can, you can play with that. All right. So in order to get more information to kind of carry this forward into detail, I've got these kind of frown lines here, which look very adult. I can move those in there, but I'm not sure that's going to work. I want to do more of a portrait study. And so I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm just going to fill it with white. And this time I'm going to do what's called rotoscoping. And I'm going to look for outside reference. And since I use Donald Trump as reference for, um, for the expressions, I might as well use him as reference for the facial template too. So I'm going to take a front view and a side view of Mr. Trump, President Trump. This might be a better side view. Let's see. And notice I'm not trying to be biased at all. I'm just using Donald Trump. Some of the pictures are going to be positive. Some are going to be satirical. I'm going to drag those right into Photoshop and then shrink them on. And we're going to study his facial proportions. And we're going to see how the individual human face, whether it's Donald Trump or someone else's face, how they differ from each other, and then what things they all have in common. I hope i got to place this first. So when you're in a hurry, you can just take things and directly move them. So if you're here for this side view, I want to make that as tall. So I'm going to use my guides, show the top of his head, not his hair, but his skull, and the top of his chin, not his neck, but his chin. And I'm going to try to line that up with this reference. Because it's just reference, it's fine if it's a little blurry, right? And then I'm going to swap it. So it's facing the viewer or facing the, the front view, right? Good. Now, just like I do with um, Illustrator, when I'm doing a tracing, I'm going to put a little onion skin layer. So I'll do an edit, fill on a new layer above, fill it with white, but set that opacity only to 50%. It's just like using tracing paper. And now I'm going to trace on a new layer, I'm getting rid of the guide so my brush doesn't lock to them. I'm going to trace the mandible and craniums just loosely. The mandible on humans is pretty circular, right? In cartoons, you might push it to be stranger shapes. Here it's pretty circular. And it's going to be, it's like a basketball. It's a fish tank that holds our brain. If it's circular from the front, it's spherical, so it's going to be circular from the side as well. And you see it's going to have the same top and bottom 
front to 